Hey fellow riders, today I'm doing a review of the Shubrath C4 helmet, starting right now on Motor Travel USA. So this is the Shubrath C4 helmet. It's an upgrade and I'm replacing a Shubrath C3 Pro helmet right here. And you can check out the review of this one right here. And there were some things on here that I, that I wasn't too happy with that I was hoping will be addressed in this helmet. And I'll let you know right now if they were. So really quickly, I've spent about 35 hours and about 1500 miles riding with this helmet. So I could give it a good review for you guys. So a couple things that I had an issue with, with the C3 Pro. Number one, the fit. Number two, the ventilation. The shield in the city mode was never really locked. And the inside of the C3 Pro, this part always felt extremely close to my mouth inside. And I'm happy to say all of those things were fixed with the C4. First off, well, I don't know if the fit was. What I did, I upgraded uh, to an XXL and that fits perfectly. I'm typically an XL in most every other helmet, uh, but for Shoebreath, the C3 Pro was a bit tight and the XXL fits really great. Uh, the one thing I've read about this helmet, if you were looking into it, I believe from medium up, is the same shell so you can always get the padding if you wanted to uh, to go up or down or just exchange it but just thought I'd mention that but yeah the fit is uh, really great the ventilation uh, they don't in the c3 they had these little cloth vent blockers uh, I, I think for winter they don't have them anymore in this which is awesome for me. Being in Florida and riding all the time, I don't even need those. I'll just close the vents and that's fine with me. Uh, the vent seems to pull a lot more air in. The switch is a lot more positive than the C3 Pro. And a lot more ventilation feels like it's coming over my head. That's probably attributed to the vent here and also the channels inside the helmet. Let me see, kind of, if you can see in there, they got rid of some of the padding and there's larger channels to help more air flow through there. So that is definitely a plus. The front vent, I don't know if more comes in here, but they did, some people would say upgrade, some people really wouldn't care, but it's on a like a spring mechanism now, and you open it by pressing it, whereas the C3 Pro was more on a hinge, and you opened and closed it by pushing it open or closed. So the ventilation so far is better than the C3 Pro, I believe. And attributing to that as well, the shield is much locks into place much better than the C3 Pro. So I can have it in city mode up to about 60 miles an hour and then it'll close where at that point you don't want, typically you wouldn't want it open in city mode. This is like when you're stopping at lights and stuck in slow moving traffic to get a little bit more air in there. But the C3 Pro, as soon as I hit 10 miles an hour, sometimes it seemed it would just shut. With this, I think you can, hopefully you can hear it. It's a lot more posi positive engagement on every single level. So it takes a lot of speed, 60 or 70 miles an hour, and then it will close. So that is definitely a plus. And as you may have seen in pictures online, I don't really notice it as much in person, but the photos online, it definitely looks longer this way. And it is, I have a lot more room 
with my mouth up front, which I like. I would rather have a little bit more space to breathe and get that hot air flowing out of the helmet than right in front of my face. So, And just like the C3 Pro, the materials are premium, nice and soft, moisture wicking. Uh, they feel cool to the touch. There's a little rubber on the bottom here. Not sure exactly the reason behind that, but it feels nice, maybe so there's not as much movement on your shoulders, but it's a nice rubbery material, uh, reflective panels on the back. Another thing that's cool about this is the integrated communication system. You pop the SC1 standard or advanced in here and a battery in here. They have the speakers and antenna already built into the helmet. So that's a plus, the microphone as well. I'm gonna do another review on that. And if you're thinking of getting this helmet because it has the integrated communications, definitely check out that review because I have a lot of opinions on that. And it's important to watch if you're thinking of getting this uh, integrated communication system as well. Make sure you watch that as well. Just like the C3 Pro, the helmet has a pin lock that works as all pin locks do keeps fog at bay when it's colder out and it really is uh, amazing. I can't speak more highly of Pinlock and this one is just as good as all of them out there. The slider on here has been upgraded from the C3 Pro. It feels a lot more smooth. I like the button isn't as chunky and it has this indentation in the middle so you can catch your glove whichever way you want to open or close it. So I really like this button. It also doesn't stick out as much, so it doesn't catch as much wind, creating uh, noise. So I really like this. The sun shield seems about the same. There's no pluses or minuses about that, but I do like the that this is built in. I used to do transition shields, but when riding in the mountains and going through tunnels and shaded tree areas, that was kind of tough because the transitions didn't uh, transition quick enough. I really like the built-in visor because you can instantaneously put it up or put it down. But I don't think they've upgraded anything with the visor itself. This bottom belt button has also I think been upgraded a bit. It's not as noisy. The engagement and disengagement of the mechanism and it moves smoothly. And also closing doesn't seem as loud to me. I don't know how they could have done anything with that, but it seems slightly uh, less noisy when closing it. One strange thing I noticed, most every helmet has an extra piece of material right here to cover up where the buckle is, but this one does not. I mean, I guess they think that that's gonna be enough, but typically there's a little bit more. And I would just like to see a little bit more and feel a little bit more there. It's not really rough or anything, and I'm not noticing it a lot, so it's not a deal breaker or a killer, but it's just, it's just a little strange. Usually there's a little extra material on this side to cover up where the buckle is. As far as the noise level, which is why a lot of people purchase this, and for the record, that's not necessarily why I purchased it. It's one of the reasons, uh, but I mean, air, to me, any helmet's gonna be noisy. You just have to use a combination of a quiet helmet and earplugs. The quietness wasn't necessarily why I purchased it, However, if that is why you're purchasing it, to me, it does seem like this one is slightly noisier than the C3 Pro. Not much, but again, to people who are sensitive to it, who wanna ride a helmet as much as possible without earplugs, this one is slightly noisier. And that might be also because with the C3 Pro, I put the speakers in myself and they were a lot closer to my ears. With this, since they're integrated, there is a bit of space left in between my ear and the speaker. So some more road noise and wind noise can get in there. To me, 
it's like I said, it's not a deal breaker. I use earplugs when I'm on the highway and at lower speeds, I don't really notice it much. And if I do, I'll just put the windshield on the, my FJR up and that pretty much takes care of any really bad road noise. But I thought I'd mention it to you. And obviously this is going to be personal opinion, but I do like the look of it. The pictures, I don't think do it justice online. It does look kind of elongated and weird. And it might on video as well. But in person, I don't notice that. And I really like the lines and the look of this helmet. The paint job is superb. Really nice paint job. This is a matte uh, paint job. And I really like the color. Nice and rich. I like the little embellishments they put on the sh shield right here. To remove the shield, it's pretty much the same way as the C3 Pro. Uh, just little levers on both sides. Super quick to take off and put back on. So I guess the big question, would I buy this helmet again? Right now, after 1,500 miles and about 35 hours, like I said, I absolutely would. I really like this helmet. It uh, feels great, has good airflow. It feels like it'll, I'll have it for years to come. It has the integrated communication system and everything on it feels like it's built to last. My initial impressions are I really, really like it. It was really good in traffic, going slow, on the highway, anywhere I would possibly go so far. Uh, it has performed exactly how I would want a helmet to perform. One thing to note too, while I'm getting close to wrapping this up, I have noticed that their shield is now beveled right here. I would assume that's for rain. I haven't encountered too much rain with this yet, so I can't attest to how it keeps the rain out, but I would assume that this bevel, not only for wind noise, but also potentially to help make a better seal with the rubber right here and keep rain out. Just again, something quick to note. And as I said a little bit earlier, make sure I'm going to post it at the same time. Make sure you also watch the video on the, the Shoebirth SC1 standard. Uh, if you're buying it as a combination, the integrated communication is your number one priority. Definitely watch that video because it's super important. Some of the things uh, that I point out about that. But as far as the helmet goes, awesome. I would totally buy one again. I'll probably look at the sales going on and see if I could get a backup one. And I'm going to look at the new ones, the C4 Pro and the C4 Carbon, and see what they've upgraded th with that to see if I want one of those as well. But overall, I would highly recommend this. I would give it four out of five stars. Has a lot of great features, low noise, pin lock, it's modular, premium inside, gives you room to breathe uh, near your mouth, uh, integrated speakers, integrated antenna, really great stuff. So I really appreciate you watching. Hopefully this helped you decide to buy one or not to buy one. If it did help you, please give the video a thumbs up and definitely subscribe to Motor Travel USA uh, because we have a lot of videos coming out and you don't want to miss any of them. So right now I'm going to put the helmet on and let's go explore. Mm -hmm.